not long ago, a student named Ibrahim Diallo participated in the Global Classrooms Conference right here in this chamber. He went on to found the African Development Coalition, which is dedicated to human rights on the continent. The mission of the African Development Coalition is really to bring together a network of individuals that are interested in African affairs, African politics, and African culture. Traveling to Guinea to carry out this project included a lot of preparation. We talked a lot about you know, security concerns, um, visas, just the legal, the legal stuff, how are you going to get here, what, do we, what procedures do we have to follow. A few months before we left, the current president died and the military took over, so, so we had to figure out, well, is it really a good idea to necessarily go and try to do a humanitarian project? Um, in a now military state with a government that's not recognized by the United States or the UN or the, or the African Union. We spent about a week in Conakry, which is the capital of Guinea. We hired construction workers. We talked to um, a water company to figure out the prices we shopped around to make sure that we, get the, we have the best prices. The trip to Mitimadu started at 7 in the morning in Conakry. Um, we got all packed into an SUV and we had to leave some of our luggage behind because it was too much. When we first arrived in Mitimadu um, to settle down and move into our house in the village, there were tons of people there to greet us. Before we knew it, people were taking our suitcases and hoisting our very heavy suitcases and like carrying them on their heads. Right after dropping our bags, we ran right into this groundbreaking ceremony where we had community elders, the students themselves, women, children, everyone was out there and just welcoming us. Sitting in, in, in front of everyone in the village and having all the kids crowding the windows and crowding the doors to see us and to hear what was going on. It was probably the very moment when it hit me just how huge the project that we're doing is and, and how needed um, a, a, an education project was for this village. The energy in the room and the excitement and the enthusiasm of everyone wanting to be around us and to welcome us there, mm -hmm. it was pretty moving. And these are all of our friends that are excited to surround us. We formed a circle where we showed where we're going to be building the additional classroom. So people got together and the elders, they had a prayer and thanking us, thanking the people that are coming there and just had the initial um, kind of laying of the brick. The first time I saw the school, it was extremely clear to me that there was a lot of work that had to be done. There were a lot of problems with it, and I frankly, looking at it, couldn't imagine what it was like for kids to go to school in that building. The ceilings leaked, the floor was slanted, the windows were too small, animals were able to get in and like stay over at night. Donc, il y avait même pas de bureau pour la, le directeur, pas de magasin. The first thing that comes to mind when I think of construction in Mitimadu is difficulty. There is no electricity in the village, so we are not able, construction workers are not able to use traditional um, tools that they use for construction and everything was done manually. <laughs> We took the roof off, um, raised all the walls up with it to bring them to the standard size. Because of um, gender chores, girl, young girls specifically have to get water for families in the morning. So if young girls have to travel two miles, three miles to get water for their families in the morning, um, that takes a, that's time taken away from going to school. The drilling started right away, so we had three or four trucks come over and they started working over, I, I believe, a three or four days we were done. So you had, the village was out, kids were around watching, everyone was excited, we had, you know, um, water just splashing everywhere, people were excited about that. It, in three or four days, I believe, they dug up to um, 80 meters and they put the PVC pipes in and 
um, it, it went very quickly. Putting the well right at the school um, brought drinking water closer and that way also a lot of girls would be able to like go to school and then just bring water back on their way home. The last few days of construction was really intense. We were up as early as we could go, we worked as late as we could physically go. You know, there were painting on the side of the, the courtyard and there's people carrying big rocks over here and children carrying, you know, everyone doing what they can to make sure that the project is complete on time. In almost every aspect of the trip, the women in the community were the first ones to help out and the men were there to supervise and interject their opinions, but they didn't really help as much. The men did help, but only the ones we paid. The women were doing the heavy lifting of rocks and, and the you know bending over to like do weeding and stuff and carrying heavy loads of water and all of that hard work was really done by all of the women. And they're doing all this hard work with their babies strapped to their backs. Early on, we decided that one of the things we were going to do when we finished the project was to have um, an official opening ceremony when everything was done so that way we could celebrate with the community, really kind of inaugurate the new school, and also kind of garner attention and try to bring local education officials in um, to see the work that we had done. We showed um, the pump to people that weren't from the community. We fed everyone. We had a bunch of kids um, go into the school and, and see what it looked like. And it was a really, really um, positive, happy event. And it was, it was truly a celebration. Trinity helped us to prepare for this trip, not only from the financial contributions and the support that we received from professors and from various administrators, but also by the very nature of the liberal arts education that we get from Trinity. This trip kind of solidified my, um, my passion. I, I see myself continuing this kind of work. I see myself talking to more people, getting more people involved in this kind of work, and, and just doing, doing what I can.